Welcome back to the Dopey Show. You won't get sick. I'm Spencer, and this is Sasha. I spent most of my 20s in federal prison, but I've been off heroin since April 9, 2010. Got a lot of stories about the stupid stuff I did to get put in prison. I've also got quite a few stories about the crazy stuff that actually happened when I was in federal prison. And God forbid you end up in prison, you want to make some of the same mistakes I made. My stomach's killing me. If you get a moxicillin for like an abscess tooth or something, Ask them not to write the amoxicillin with clavo. I don't know what clavo is, but it's like Wu-Tang Clan. It ain't nothing to with. I'm telling you, you don't want clavo. Man, make your gas something awful. Lord have mercy. God, I got barred and went in the store, stayed in the store 45 minutes, came back out. I about threw up. It was still lingering. Yeah. Anyhow, Lord have mercy. So... Some stuff that got said, I heard somebody say on another channel, it made me think about this story, and this was something that kind of was ongoing for a little bit. See, something you hear people talk about, like, oh, I got hands. Oh, I got hands. You know, uh, usually they don't. I mean, just being real about it. Usually people who say they have hands do not have hands. Okay, unless they've trained. Unless they've actually trained. I didn't have hands. I didn't have hands. Nah, hell no, I didn't. I was uncoordinated as could be. More of a natural grappler. I had to work my hands. Uh, and even then, you know, I'm, I'm better with clinch work and elbows and everything else. I More of a Muay Thai striker is what um, I do well with. But anyway, so I had a buddy in this building. It's at the low security, so you don't get locked down. You stay... Uh, you stand in your room or your cubicle at 9 p.m. They do count. They clear count. Then you can go about. Then you got to go back at midnight. They do count again. After that, you can keep on staying up. Shoot, till 2, 3, 4 in the morning. Stay up all night if you want. Just go in your room and count time. So what ended up happening was there was this new guy, and he was just Mr. Me Too. If you sold a kilo, he sold two kilos. If you had a, a, a Maserati, he had a Ferrari, okay? Knowing he didn't have none of that stuff. None, he's lying. But apparently he had hands too. You don't know about my hand. Oh, sit, blah, blah, blah. You don't know how quick I am. And all this stuff. And I'm thinking, Lord, I must be shaking my head. My other friend who's in there, always instigating some stuff, okay? Especially with me. And he kind of made me do this against my will about had to have been a, a dozen times. It was like every other week there for a while. Always with a new person that was a loudmouth. He'd say something in front of me. And now, they're new. They don't know that I'm, you know, stupid strong, as Pinto called it. You know, I don't weigh a lot, but I can lift a whole lot for my weight. And, you know, I, I'm, I smile a lot. I don't walk around making a mean face to look hard. You know what I mean? I, I don't do that stuff. I mean, you know, that, 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 that's dumb. Why am I going to do that? Be miserable all the time? Nah, I ain't doing that. So, he'd say something. Shit. White boy right here, he'll get you. Hell, no, I'd never let a white boy get me. Sound like Bernard Hopkins. I'd never let a white boy beat me. And my buddy's black too, by the way. And I mean, he's, he's like my brother, okay? But... He knew what they were going to do. He knew that they were going to pull the ghetto thing and think, you know, his country sounding goofy, smiling. Dude. What was he going to do? He ain't going to do nothing. So we came up with a number of rules. Each time was different. There were some times when it was literally just hands. There were a good many times, though, I uh, got it to be basically MMA rules. Now, it was not closed fist, and you know, couldn't all, uh, but even with open hand, and you're doing this in prison, it's you're running a high risk of a fight. It was stupid. I should have just let him say what he said about me that time, and let it be dead, so I wouldn't have had to do this the ongoing times. It wasn't like any crazy feat. Karate, in its current state, is pussified. It's like a tag game. Now, I trained it four hours a day, six days a week for two years when I was on bond. 
And, you know, Kempo has more of a boxing style stance. A um, lot of low kicks. A lot of low kicks. A uh, lot of clinch work, knees, elbows, stuff like that. But I went to a lot of seminars just to learn cross train. And um, Muay Thai was what I really liked. Okay, for somebody who wasn't as coordinated, you know, until you build up your coordination, something that's called the long guard in Muay Thai is excellent, especially against people who ain't trained. So instead of holding your hand, you know, in a boxer stance, basically if you take your foot and you step one out this way, so there, there's a space, and it's more like a Muay Thai stance. But long guard, the left hand is like three quarters of the way extended. So rather than, you know, having your hands here, I'm gonna have to lean back like Fat Joe. I wouldn't be leaning back like this if I was standing up in the stance, but you know, gotta lean back over Sasha. So basically, my hands would be this far out. Of course, I'm not leaning back if I was in the stance, but this is the point. My hands are this far out. You've got to go through them to get to me. And of course, you know, all these people that has hands, you know, do all this goofy stuff. There was one dude up in the, that put me in the TV room with. Oh, he, he about got mad. I about, I about really had to fight him because he started doing this. He started, he, he did like these little T-Rex wrists. At like, you know, before he threw off. And I was like, I said, man, what in the hell are you doing? I said, who taught you to throw a punch? He got mad at me about that. But basically, it was it was a touch contest, a slap boxing. Kind of like Rick James said. You know, you see your brother, you throw him up, I see who's the quickest. You know, it was kind of like that. But I want to win, and I don't want them to get a single punch off on me, a single touch. I don't like my face being touched. I got a thing about it. Casey thought I had some type of issue with her. She didn't realize I just don't like my face being touched. But anyway, so this is the first particular time. And this guy, basically we agree, no takedowns. You know, um, and I said, well, I said, do you mind if uh, we throw – you know, knees, kicks, as long as it's to the waist down. He said, yeah, go ahead, it ain't gonna help you. And I was like, all right, buddy. And uh, you know, it. he should he should have taken that, but I was basically taking minimum risk. So even if we had done hands, it wasn't gonna be impressive. If I had actually punched him from the long guard, it would not have been powerful punches for the most part that actually touched him. It would have been mostly a jab touching him as he charges in, is all it was. So we get started. And you know, I, I just hold my hands down by my side. If I'm five foot away from somebody, they, they're, they're not in punching range. So why am I gonna hold my hands up gas my arms out? If you see people that are sparring or running around and they're more than five foot away and they're holding their hands up, running around, the, you're gassing your arms out. When you're five foot and behind, let your arm down, shake them out, and then whenever you get back in punching range, then you put them back up. So, but I just hold my hands completely down, just being a little bit smug, being honest. And I had my right foot at a 45 degree angle, and my left foot, it, they were literally this close. I kept them close. And I said, Go ahead. I said, try to smack me in the face as many times as you can. It's first one in 10 now. You can get 10 right here, right now. Go ahead and, you know, get a little white guy out, you know. It's that way you you know you, you had the hands that you told everybody you had. I was talking it up. He charges in, full on in. We just said, I was allowed to kick the abdomen. I don't know what this dummy was thinking. He's looking at my head, head hunting, trying to swing, and he came in like a bull. So, a deep kick, all it is, is you lift your lead leg up, and the ball of your foot hits right there. I usually go right for the bladder, like right below the belly button. It's harder to kick, harder to, you know, grab a hold of my leg that way. And that buckled him over. I mean, he buckled a good bit, and when he buckled a good bit, as soon as, as soon as he buckled, I smacked him right in the side of his ear. And uh, he got a little bit more reckless, a little bit more careless. 
there are people who will have you think when they get mad, you don't understand when I get mad, I just see red, bro. I just see red, I just see red. Okay, well, the, the people that just see red have about half the time that they would have, um, which isn't a lot if they haven't trained at all. Um, basically, you're gonna gas yourself out very, very quick. And you're gonna get, leave yourself open to counters. See, fighting is not two people getting in there and punching people in the face. That's brawling. Fighting is setting up traps, setting up angles, setting up. Muay Thai is more just crashing through somebody, which I, I like that too. And, uh, you know, I still grind a broom. I don't hit a broom. I grind it. And my shin sounds like a serrated edge knife. Okay. Now, as we went along and this guy kept coming after me, I touched him a couple times, you know, just along, just boom, and then I move off, and you know he started getting a little bit more aggressive. I thought, man, I really have to fight this dude. You know, people come in swinging hard. I can get knocked out, absolutely. Y'all right up there? Shoot, I don't know what she did, but anyway, um, yeah, anybody can get knocked out. That's some t that, that was probably really his best chance is to come in there and just start swinging wild and hope one hits me because he doesn't know what he's doing. You know, but I'm just sitting there, you know, just fainting. That's hard to do sitting down, especially my stomach hurting right now. But fainting, you know, it's, it's with your hand, it's with your hand, with your head, with your foot, or with all three. And, you know, when you punch, you exhale. You, and you can also faint by just and he's biting off that. He's starting to breathe hard. And he's getting he's getting upset. He's getting really upset. Like he's wanting to hurt me. He's realized I gotta save face now. He doesn't know that, you know, um, through lifting weights and some of my other stuff, I've got a relatively minor, very low level bit of status, but it's enough to where ain't no shame in me beating you, okay? But he's thinking Man, I let this white guy beat me up. I'm just getting to prison. It's gonna be a next rough, however many years he got. Okay, so he's thinking he's gotta whoop me. And I say, okay, time to chop him down. And my best thing in uh, Kempo, I had a number of these little in-school matches. And it was basically like MMA rules. Uh, we did wear headgear and we did, didn't wear, we weren't open finger gloves, but it was karate gloves. It wasn't like MMA gloves. I had three TKOs from leg kicks. I did more private lessons than I can count on the Muay Thai roundhouse kick. Not the karate one, the Muay Thai roundhouse one, which slams your shin into their thigh. And I remember the first time somebody checked my kick. Oh my God, I felt like my shin was gonna break. And I remember, you know, um, the first time I got kicked in my thigh, it felt like I got electrocuted goes up your sciatic nerve and you know somebody who wouldn't train they're not going to be able to take many of those so you know i said a couple you know moved around and i started lifting this leg up because every time i lift that leg up he, he's putting his hand down and he's looking you know it's, it's making him lower his hands and then there i could counter up top right but i'm wanting him to look so i lift this leg up i put it down and you do a stutter step so you step at a 45 degree angle and you pivot. So the toes on my left foot are gonna pivot and they're gonna be pointing that way. 180 degrees at the end. You're kicking through them. You're not kicking at them. You're kicking through them. And I lit him right in his, right above the knee, right in the side of his thigh. And I saw this look. That look of, at this moment, he knew he effed up. You know, just that, oh shit, what the hell did he just do to me? And, um, you know, saw his eyes lighting up, but then after that look came, he got angrier and he came at me rushing. Now he's breathing hard, I'm breathing relatively easy, but his anxiety, his fury, I'm not gonna lie, it's making me nervous because he's getting more anxious. It's making me more nervous so my breathing's going a little bit up, but his is way worse. Step around a couple more times, 
and I throw another one. This time I throw a calf kick. Basically, about midway up the calf, I slam my shin into his calf. And it kind of creates an effect, kind of like a heel hook. It'll torque the knee. It can tear, tear out a, you know, ACL, MCL, depending if it's inside or outside kick. And after that one, you know, he comes at me even harder. The third kick was what it took. The third kick, he fell over. And, uh, you know, I went over there and I said, I said, man, he, you know, he knows I trained, so he's just trying to, you know, he's he just trying to get kicks off of something. I said, ain't no shame. I said, you're pretty good, though. I said, I'll work with you. He's like, shoot, man, he played me like that. And I said, yeah, I, I gave him an out. If you give people an out, it, it lets their pride not get shattered. And, you know, but after that day, he quit that Mr. Me Too mess. He was actually a pretty cool dude. Sometimes people need to get their ass kicked. When they get their ass whooped, they realize, you know, maybe I ain't as bad as I think I am. And, you know, for whatever I knew, there, there were guys there who could absolutely wreck me. I knew a very minimum amount, but a minimum amount to somebody who knows nothing. Two years of training extensively, you know, two years is not a long time. To somebody who knows nothing, is it's a huge skill gap. But there were people there, oh my God, destroy me. Absolutely, just pick me, couldn't do anything with. And various arts too, Mr. Shaw, Tariq Shaw, um, there's a Sundance Film Festival, I think won an award, terror uh, with the error and the things. It's You can look it up on YouTube, it's about him. He's a martial arts expert, 10th degree red belt. 10th degree black belt, but it's a red belt at that point in two different martial arts, had his own gym. They screwed that man in his charges, but he was he's one of my best friends. When I got back to the low from the medium, he made sure I got to sit in his spot when he wasn't in there. And I know he let me sit in the spot and he didn't watch TV on purpose. I'd have a place to sit. Mr. Shaw couldn't do nothing with him. Tap out was the baddest dude on the compound though, and I'm gonna tell you a story about him tomorrow. Tap out was the biggest, baddest, nicest guy on the compound. Um, he reminds you of Derek Lewis, and if you don't know who Derek Lewis is, look up Derek Lewis versus Volkov, V-O-L-K-O-V, post-fight speech. That's the funniest speech ever. Derek Lewis is funny. He lost every second of that fight, and he won with 15 seconds left with a wild punch. Just like that guy could have. He could have he got mad and swung wild, and he could have caught me. That could have happened. I'm under no illusion. No, like, I'm invincible. Nah. Nah, anybody can get caught. But Derek Lewis, tap out looked like Derek Lewis. I saw tap out clean. Pick 315 pounds up off the ground. <gasps> press it for eight. Standing overhead press. He could bench press in the 500s. Oh, sorry, it's hurting. And um, but he was he had a guy. His calf was so big. He had a guy getting choked out in a rear naked choke. He had a guy, a full guy with his face, and then a head and a body there. He had a whole portrait of two people, one choking the other one out with the rear naked choke on his calf. And he was a mixed martial artist. And Benching over in, in the mid 500s and doing all the crazy feats of strength he did, you guess nobody messed with him. That was what let me know. Because I had the whole complex, you know, about how I'm smiley bone and I couldn't, I'd only put on so much muscle. What I got to do for people not to mess with me? And I saw people tried him and he had to whoop them. And I said, shoot, no matter how big or bad you get, there's always going to be somebody stupid enough to just come and mess with you. They're going to be ignorant people trying everything else. So this became a running game. And the guy who was present there during this, this specific encounter I'm speaking of, the next time it happened, he antagonized it with the next new guy. And he sat in there and watched it, and he, and he laughed. And I'll tell that another day. I, I, it, it's amazing because in these conversations with a number of people from Kevin Crockett, Pinto, um, it, it brings back some of this stuff that I, I hadn't even thought about. You know what I mean? I remember every detail of it, but like I just hadn't thought about it in forever. But yeah, um, 
whenever we got new young person in there that wouldn't shut up and stuff, and they got sick of them, they'd wait till I was walking by and say, yeah, little white guy out there, he'll whoop you. He, he, you think you got hands? No, nah, you ain't got hands. Him? No, nah, never that. And then they'd say something offensive about me, being country, being little, being white, whatever, to the point where then it's offensive to me. So then I've got to do something. I can't just not do something because then I'm a punk. So I mean, that's why I said against my will. They, I had to. I had to do it. They left me no choice. But they got to where they were getting kicks out of this stuff. And it could have got me in big trouble. Sasha is out. You are a baby. Mwah. You are a precious little princess, yes you are. That can turn vicious in a second. I know she acts sweet. She's not an old, tired dog. My God, as soon as this camera gets cut off, she gets let out in that yard. Anybody approaches that fence line, she's ready to eat them. Yeah, she's trained to protect me. I'm a felon. Can't have one of them, so you know I got me a German Shepherd. Anyhow, my stomach's hurting, but I'm going to get some more stuff up tonight. Um, I apologize for the lower tone of my voice, but like my stomach, I've got to talk so low because if I extend my diaphragm so much, it feels like I'm going to throw up stomach acid. So that's why I'm talking at a lower tone, and I do apologize for that. And I hope you liked the video. If not, that's 21 minutes and 38 seconds of your life, and we should never get back. On the other channel, I will be doing videos there tonight too, as well. On that one, I on that one I cuss a little bit more. So be forewarned. But I'm gonna pin the comment at Spencer and Sasha uncensored. But I'm gonna talk about some funny stuff. I'll make you laugh. I promise you that. So anyway, if you liked it, press the like button. And this coming weekend, I'm gonna show you this stuff. I'm gonna show you the stuff that works. The stuff that if I'd focused on from the start, I'd have been twice as good, twice, four times, ten, five, ten times as good in the same amount of time, it's possible. There's a handful of things. It's Bruce Lee said, you know, and I, I'm more of a fan of mixed martial artists than you know the whole mystical kung fu BS, but he did say something good. I fear not the man who practiced um, a thousand kicks a hundred times each, uh, or a thousand kicks 10 times each, but I fear the man who practiced one kick 10,000 times. You know he's gonna be good at that kick. That's why I got good at that teak kick, that lead leg kick, that and the low right roundhouse. Those are my two kicks. Um, I can throw head level. I can throw front kicks in particular. I can throw head level. I can throw on five foot ten, five foot eleven. I'm throw a roundhouse. I'm throw a shin to the chin, but um, front kick. I can put the ball on my foot on somebody. It's probably six two to six four. I'm got more flexibility that way than that way. Deadlift, tore up. But this weekend I'm gonna get this rolling. And if you got somebody, somebody that's cool, they gotta be good tempered. And you gotta, I'm gonna speak about that whenever I do the videos on it, but there's a certain attitude you gotta have. You can't have ego, okay? You've gotta realize it's like a mathematical formula. You're learning something. You're learning something that works, and you gotta trust in it. So, anyway, that's the end of this one.